Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all my friends on the Earthship. Welcome to my little Sunday alchemy time that I've created, just for us to reach for the stars and begin some new empowering codes to live by. I'm Cindy Carter. I'm an intuitive, an artist, and an energy healer, and a spirit consultant. This series of alchemy podcasts that I produce each Sunday is a progressive building of information, and it really allows you to see your role in life. And are you mastering yourself, self-mastering to become an alchemist, the director of your own life, and a witness of your own life in a neutral state? See, you are control, in control of yourself and your possibilities on this earth. We just keep forgetting it. So this is kind of like your weekly reminder that you are the sovereign being with power and wisdom. So I'm going to keep like tickling you with that information every week. Thanks for being here. So last podcast, we talked about ancient wisdom, about sovereignty, and ancient wisdom that comes through us, and how it should be sovereign action with little or no influences of negative traits from our ancestral heritage, or our even our past lives. That's easier said than done, right? But to revere and honor all the energies presented to you, it allows you to kind of release the influences that no longer serve us. So you can look back at that podcast called Ancient Wisdom is Sovereign, learn a little bit more about it, but it naturally takes us to uh, how do you remain in your power with the matrix all around us? So my thought was that, you know, Maybe I should show people all the subtleties of alchemy, the hidden alchemy. You know, we're trying to make life comfortable on an earth, and we've got to be really truthful and see ourselves clearly. This is what is divine alignment. As the alchemist, it's alignment. It's like a daily to-do list for your soul. It's not work. It just happens. But we have all these influences, away from our alignment. I just want to align with my truth in this moment and the next moment. I really don't have any other agenda. That's what I knew when I woke up that day. I said, I'm going to know my truth because I'm not living it. I had no idea what that meant. But we can come to our truth by understanding what is around you and the subtleties of what's presented to you. So this takes conscious ability conscious focus and action, to be conscious and aware of your actions and the actions of others in a neutral state. I talk a lot about awareness and clarity, and this consciousness, this awareness, is basically what ascension is all about, becoming self-aware, where you ascend the thoughts, ascend the consciousness into a refinement of your accumulated self. So that brings me to today's podcast, Hidden Alchemy. I'd like to show you in a couple of different ways, well, it's more than a couple, but how this hidden alchemy affects our thoughts and our actions, and how you can overcome and move through the hidden gracefully, you know, in a full allowance of what you see. I'm not going to tell you these things so that you can be triggered by them, or get pissed off about them. I'm uncovering the hidden alchemy, and I'm doing it in a very light fashion. I don't choose to do these YouTubes in a very uh, deeply um, held way at times. That's more for a one-on-one conversation. I don't like to spout off as knowing something that I feel directly as an influence for you. That's my kindness to you and myself. But I do have very deep thoughts about the hidden alchemy on on this earth and where it came from. You can overcome, though, these thoughts. They're, you know, come in as they come in as energy, reflective energy of outside sources. 
and it affects your thoughts and your actions and how you can overcome and move through the hidden part. You've got to do this with, you know, the knowing that you're the alchemist. So hidden alchemy, you know, it can be comprised of lots of different things like symbology or references to thought forms, you know, thought forms that are not yours, subliminal messages, societal influences, corporate uh, statements, influence of religion, influence of education, the symbols and signs and messages that are all around you in advertising, influencing your consumerism. We're heavy into that right now. So in all the forms that subliminal messages and hidden alchemy and symbology occurs, which is everywhere, you have to ask yourself, where did these come from? And do you realize that they collect your consciousness in a geometric form and rearranges it so that it can uh, utilize the energy of you? It's geometry and science. And you have to wade through these geometries every day with your mind and your sight and your sound and your feeling, your vibration. we got to figure out how to become aware of these things so you can move gracefully through life. That's what we're trying to do. So one form of hidden alchemy is subliminal messages. I know most everybody understands about subliminal messages, but let's take it a little further. I know people um, that are in the industries that created these things. So I'm speaking of this in a firsthand reference, um, not based on, you know, any kind of construct of another human. I've seen these things, witnessed them, and talked to people involved. So... We often realize that, you know, advertising, marketing is riddled with subliminal messages. And these can come in as signals or sounds or smells. And what they're, what they're doing is they're designed to pass right below your normal limits of perception into your subconscious mind right away. Unconsciousness, unawareness. You are imprinted with words and sounds, even words spoken backwards, imprint the con- subconscious mind. So if we continue to do this and we have belief systems pounded into our mind, then if these pile up over time, they become belief systems of ourself that we then you know, bring through our genetic history for all our offspring. It's ridiculous. So the images or sounds or phrases that flash really too quickly for the conscious mind, you know, flashing on the screen, flashing on the movie screen, flashing on the radio, you know, embedded in music. These things are so quick, you don't register them in your subconscious, I mean, your conscious mind at all. When several repetitions of these messages are taken... If you take them in unknowingly, it really can affect your personal attitude, your personal actions, your personal beliefs. I learned about hidden alchemy in college in my advertising classes, where we learned of all the different ways that someone could purchase or buy or want something that they didn't want before. I had some pretty amazing professors that taught us how to do it. I mean, it was pure manipulation from the first day I walked in the class to the last day. How to get someone to do something they didn't really want to do. I'll never forget the professor telling us of a leather store in a mall that had these freight. Now, this is back in 1981. Uh, So they would have these things in stores that would pump out fragrances of leather. And that store increased their sales because of pumping out that leather smell. 
So instead of you just happening upon a store in an equal measure of uh, opportunity with all other stores, they influenced your ability to make a decision. Pretty clever. Then there's all the logos. I'm sure you've seen all these crazy logos that have all kinds of subliminal messages. Some are really quite subtle, and others are, you know, quite blatant. I mean, they use symbology in everything. Even the Clinton Foundation and the pedophilia uh, interaction has logos involved. It's amazing how they imprint the mind with something to associate with something else. And it allows you no choice unless you become aware. So like in 1957, there was this market researcher who found out that if you flash the words eat popcorn or drink Coca-Cola during a movie for just a fraction of a second, it increased the sales at the movie theater. So that's just a marketing ploy, right? What about someone who weaponizes this? You have to think heavily about the, the technology I'm speaking about and whose hands are it, you know, using it. What mind is using it? Is it a reptilian mind or a heart-based mind? Subliminal messages should never be used in any heart-based activity unless it's to feed the soul the underlayment of love as a vibration that people do not see but feel and maybe don't even realize. That's subliminal, but it wasn't made in manipulation. I'm speaking of manipulative activities. So there's the music industry. You know, it got corrupted. I'm sure many of you know that the hertz or the frequency of music changed under the hands of this evil (laughs) empire. The music went from, I don't remember what the hertz is, someone will probably tell me below in the comments, Uh, but it went to 440 or something. And, And this change, I know, it changes the cellular structure of the body. The frequency blasting into the auric field disrupts the cicada rhythms of the body and the lymph nodes of the blood system. The cellular body gets changed and disrupted. The music industry did that on purpose. It wasn't an accident. Because we have these very high technologies that have been hidden from us. So part of the hidden alchemy is the hidden technologies. So there's light as a technology. It's also part of hidden alchemy. I could go really deep into this rabbit hole on this one too, but about how light can heal a person. I've watched it. I've watched it bring a, a burn from absolute 3D, uh, three-degree burn, third-degree burns, into a complete skin over the burn in three minutes with light, high technology. That was through a time traveler friend that I got to witness that. These are technologies that are not known and well given to anyone except like if you live in, um, you know, Austria, they have think tanks and they invite you to see their new technologies. If we did that here, you'd be dead. So you have to, you know, walk lightly in this realm of hidden alchemy. So, you know, it's not only the music industry that has hidden influences. We're here at light, how our bodies and our minds utilize the light of absorption and how we bring light into the biggest organ of our body, the skin, and how our eyes influence us so subtly but so profoundly. The underlayment of this is that the lighting companies and manufacturers are owned by the factions of the cabal. So they utilize this method of control, this subtle way of moving you out of sovereignty and into manipulation. It's hidden alchemy of the matrix. So that's just the visible light that we see. They change these hurts to affect you. The light that you see, but what about all the invisible light? 
just under your level of perception and all its influences. Remember there's an underlayment of controlled manipulation while I speak of these things. One underlying intention, and it's almost like we're unearthing their manipulative mission statement. And because we choose to be alchemists, we see what we do not want in our auric field. We're learning how to step away from these influences and take back our sovereignty. And we don't, don't do this through fighting. We do this through loving ourselves. That's why I'm talking about these things. This is alchemy. We are in charge of the energy around us, so let's accept that. So we could think about fluorescent lights, you know, at 50 or 60 hertz, and the lights from your televisions that cause seizures and migraines, that cause brain anomalies. Well, human bodies resonate at 62 to 72 hertz. So let's be mindful of where we tread, because low vibration creates disease. And don't think that this was not known when they created fluorescent lights. We have technologies that are hundreds and hundreds of times greater than the technologies we use. This was created for manipulation, not our betterment. You know, I created light. Yeah, you did. Now watch it get manipulated. So remember, this is about alchemy and your understanding of your power to overcome any vibration in your midst. Remember that while I'm speaking, please. (laughs) there's stadium lighting that pulses you with low wave vibrations there's blue light from all the devices that changes the cicada rhythms in your body how your body processes food even by light it can also you know heal people but i'm talking about the hidden alchemy right now i'm being on the swayed on the uh, negative side today so that you can see I'm not here for the love and light crowd. We can feel great, and I can tell you how to overcome just from my own experiences. But we have to be aware of what there is out there, or you can't be the alchemist. If you go to the alchemy table, and here you are ready to work on yourself, if you don't know what's there, how are you going to work? You can be messing around with some energies you don't have any clue about. So just understand that this kind of stuff was created on purpose. We knew these things. We studied these things. Stanford, Yale, and all those other cabal-run institutions, all these places have thousands of scientists studying the effects of manipulation for many years. Light manipulation is just one hidden alchemy of the matrix. So where's our sunlight? hidden behind the chemtrails. Oh, beloved sunlight. We humans really need the natural sun of our great sun. We need the coded energy, the life force, but we're continually brought to this mission statement of the underlayment of manipulation. You have to be taught that, I have to be taught, we all have to be taught that the sun, you know, is not evil. Because we've been taught otherwise. We were taught that it was evil and that it would kill you. So stay away from it. Put on hats, put on gloves, put on sunglasses. But in essence, that's not actually true. Science has come to understand differently, that we need sunlight for our cells and all our organs. We, of course, been taught that, you know, we have to hide And how our bodies metabolize light is important to our self-awareness levels. Now, I know somebody out there is going, skin cancer, skin cancer. The, The materials that are in the sunscreens, along with artificial light, and the high density of the sun creates cancers. It's the combination of these. Pure sunlight does not cause cancers. It is our life force, and we've been taught differently. It's how we become light beings, and that's why it's masked. It's how we metabolize light. 
It's really important to our self-awareness. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of ohms are you taking in today? So here we are with this ability to manipulate and persuade another person's choice through their unknowingness, through their subconscious mind, through their pure innocence. Is this right action for a human? I think not. You know, manipulation of a soul's choice, especially an unknowing choice, is coercion and deeply malevolent in my eyes. This idea that people can be subliminally influenced is really ancient. Like, it goes back to the 5th century, I think. There were these Greek thinkers that they attempted to employ subtle yet persuasive languages to their readers uh, and how they spoke in a sneaky way to kind of influence people. You know, hypnotherapy and NLP also utilize this hidden alchemy. You know, some is good, some is bad. So these hidden symbols, they have studies that have shown that our brain responds to the subliminal messages with activity levels that change in the amygdala. The amygdala, for those of you that don't know, is the reptilian brain, you know, the fight or flight So this unconscious activity that produces your emotions and your actions and your thoughts, it it really jazzes up your amygdala. All this hidden alchemy everywhere, symbology, sounds, commercials, advertising, influences. It just makes us human slaves after a while. A slave to the constructs of consumerism, the lies that you cannot now see. So this is when you might start realizing that some of the thoughts that come to you are not your own. Like, whoa, how did that get there? As the alchemist, it's, it's like your responsibility now to be conscious of these thoughts. And are they yours? Are they, you know... If they come into your mind, it's still your responsibility for them. Even if the thought came from another place, it's your conscious responsibility to see the, through clarity that you know this is not yours. I mean, there's evidence. I'm going to talk of one here. Somebody may not believe me. It's okay. I understand about something called um, the rod of God. It's a device, a technology that inserts thoughts and ideas and words into a person's brain, directly into the brain. Subconscious minds that are influenced like a fireball in the mind. They cannot get away from the thought. It overtakes their brain. It fires up the amygdala, and they do exactly as they were told. This has been used for ages. Just Think about recent days and false flag events and the people portrayed as the killer or the shooter. The rod of God was used on these people to alter their activities, to play out an agenda that's a hundred years old, to bring fear to humans, again, lowering the vibrations of the body. So what about all this symbology the symbology of death interwoven into all the religious icons. You know, the red color is used as a trigger. Santa Claus was used as a reference in the early days of killing children. It's not played out today. We've morphed into that underlayment where we don't even realize it now, that its original intention was of malevolence. That's why some people have a real aversion to Santa Claus and the whole idea of Santa Claus. The vast majority of thoughts circling circling around in our brains happen to be like below the radar of our conscious awareness anyway. So you got to understand that newspaper, radio, TV, all the mainstream sources of information are bombarding you with the subliminal hidden alchemy. The underlying influences to vote a certain way, to hate a certain way, to discriminate and divide ourselves in a certain way. 
You can believe me or not, but this has all been planned for like over a hundred years. It's influence on a humanity. The factions like the Rand Corporation, they made the syllabus for us to be influenced and conjoled and herded into religion. Don't even get me started. You know, this is a short podcast, supposedly. Societal influences and education, you know, all this persuasion, withholding our sleep, as in the industrial society, you know, where we had to punch that time clock so we could change the economic status of the cabal and the corporations, not for our harmony, but for theirs, harmony of greed. So we changed our two sleeps to one sleep, keeping our vibrations really low. You see, all these are subtle influences with an underlayment of an undercurrent that's based in manipulation of a human's choice through this hidden alchemy of the matrix. This is serious stuff. The cabal, the Illuminati, or whatever you want to call those reptilians that feed on the blood of children, these are the ones influencing you. These are the killers, the breeders of human sacrifice. These are the beings on this earthship, and off for that matter, that wish you ill will. They do not in no means have your best interests at heart. It's actually the opposite. They wish death upon you, called Agenda 21, to put you in a trance like a subliminal influence from birth to death. Decreasing the population is the agenda. So our growing understanding of the human mind means we can begin to hack our unconscious powers of inspiration and creativity and pain relief and emotional control, bringing back memory of our power and wisdom, our kindness, our love and the vibrations of peace. All those energies are just in range of our conscious mind. But so is the opposite. So it's up to you to be the alchemist. So now you see the subtle yet volatile manipulation to our subconscious minds. So you might be asking yourself, so what do we do now? Well, if you want to be free, to be sovereign, beyond the influence of hidden alchemy, then you've got to become the alchemist of your life. To work with the influences, to wake up to the manipulation, to see the power of light, the power of word, the power of sound, and the misuse of those things. Take those back as your own power. We then can begin to become aware, unearthing the influences of the subconscious mind. We must love the choices we've made, no matter the level of neg- negative influences. We're all doing the best that we can here on this playground. I, for one, will transcend the matrix of manipulation by becoming the alchemist of my life, of all my lives. The accumulation known as me and all the subtle influences of this life and other lives is now squarely in my hands, in my thoughts, in my actions, and in my heart. I did not bring these to your awareness today so that you could become the victim, become defeatist. It's to give you the tools to work with. Subtle energy can be tricky. Subtle manipulation is definitely tricky. So I'm going to leave you with this. As the alchemist, you're now aware, you're now awake, you're now the one with the abilities to have power and wisdom to bring higher energy to your being, to not accept the constructs of thought, of belief, and ideas that are based in hidden alchemy of the matrix. You're now kind of gifted with choice to alter the energy within your body and mind to one of peace, to one of harmony. This is how we bring life force back to a humanity one by one. So to do this is to step beyond the matrix, to step beyond the manipulation. I'm watching many of you do this as you come into the idea that you're more powerful as a force of change when you access your heart, 
when you have compassion for yourself and others while part of this earthship scenario? Let's make this scenario something else where we love ourselves through the awareness and it rises our vibration. That's alchemy. That's how we rid ourselves of the lower vibrating hidden alchemy. One way to really accelerate your ancient self-awareness and your wisdom is to participate in my template of grace. By focusing for 11 days, it's basically an 11-day meditation series, short 15-minute sessions with a Tibetan bowls in the background, and I am speaking you through an activation, a very powerful activation of grace, but you have to be ready for change if you participate because it does change your life. You can ask several of my clients. Um, I can provide testimony, but it is quite amazing what happens to these people. It's available uh, as an MP3 download on my website, and I price it at just $33 US. So it could be highly accessible by many people. And I do gift these to people who cannot afford them. If somebody would like to have a copy, just contact me. I'll access your situation and see if we can work on that. See, higher vibration is free. So by bringing you products that help you in your vibrational field, these can be the tools of your acceleration if you choose. So I put out a free ebook called So Lean, the Ancient One. It's also on my website. It's a book of eight years of channelings like of this higher wisdom of myself that came is from a collective I call the ancient one. And they were teaching me about immortal um, life and life force and how to become the alchemist. You can now find me on Patreon. I'm really finding Patreon quite fun where I'm embarking on some new videos, a new podcast series um, about subtle energy That's a really fun one I'm working on now. Announcing some conference calls, and I'll be doing some, probably some internet-based classes. I'll be sharing some exciting, subtle energy things, the technologies that I'll be using, um, and to provide for others. It's for your well-being and um, health, mental health, physical health. But may we all, you know, unearth the hidden alchemy and remain untouched by its influences. Changing the way we live and the way we breathe and the way we see into grace beyond the hidden alchemy. Many blessings.